Right, hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me back on the banks of the river and we're in search of pike. So this is the first proper session out on the bank after getting back from France. Much different conditions most definitely. Woke up this morning, there was mist all over the roads, a nip in the air and it definitely felt like I was going out pike fishing proper this morning. But today is carrying a lot of colour. So the first thing I did when I arrived was get a bait in the water. I know from experience it's not going to be easy today. It would be good if we get one or two pike on the bank. And from experience, you need to get that bait in the water as soon as possible. So with the ledger rod out and fishing, we've got a mackerel on that bait. And we've got the float rod out as well. And on that, we've got a trusty smelt. The rods are out behind you. I'm going to pour myself a brew and make myself some porridge. Sit back and hopefully one of the rods will go. So with the porridge settling to the side of me, I've got my brew. Just want to cover a little bit on what I want to cover on this vlog. Like I said on the previous video, that I'll put a link to the top of the screen now. The videos that I make on piking and barbel and the videos on the channel are there, obviously on a Friday afternoon to give people a bit of a, a buzz before the weekend. But in the videos, I try and cover as many hints and tips as I can to try and break those boundaries that exist in fishing, especially with pike and barbel where people are apprehensive about trying them because they're different and they don't like the idea of what goes with the piking. With that in mind on this video, whether we catch or not, we'll cover my float ledger setup and the ledger setup that I use for my pike fishing. And fingers crossed, let's be positive, hopefully we'll do a bit of unhooking of a pike as well. So next time we bring the rods in, we'll have a look at the setups and go over what we're using today and the baits that I've chosen. And always when pike fishing, however unlikely you feel a bite is going to be, always be prepared. You've got your bolt cutters, which, you know, over the years I've had them, maybe a handful of times I've had to use them. But when you need them, you're thankful of them. And some pliers. All set, ready to go, so you're not hunting around when you get a fish. All set, ready, when hopefully you get that pike on the bank. So the base setup that I'm using for both rods is my Corum Snapper Colt dead bait rod. It's a 12 foot rod and 3.25 pound test curve. And that's the same for the float rod and the ledger rod. I've teamed that up with a 6000 Zelos reel. And on there I've got 60 pound Piker Esox braid. What that gives me is a solid base to begin with. On the river, it's full of snags and all different things. And you want to be able to bend them hooks out and not leave any traces on the bottom of the river or the canal that you're fishing. So that is the, the solid setup that I use, whether I'm fishing a lake, a river or a canal. Nice, solid setup that's not going to let you down. So down to the basic setup and I've got a float stop on the line and two beads. Got a nice strong heavy float for the river it's a 40 gram float nice and visible and what you want to be is in control of the river that you're fishing so the river's not going to pull your bait out of position especially when you're on a snaggy river like this one where you find a clear spot you want to make sure that that bait's not moving the two beads allow you to see when it's you know cocked up to the stop knot in low light when i fish i always fish it over depth like that by a float so then when I get a bite, you can see the float cock, so it moves along the top. But that just enables me in the low light to see when I'm just at flow over depth. That's down to a Corum quick change weight, and that's 40 gram. Again, easy to change when you go into other venues and stuff like that. A quick change swivel, then I've got an 18 inch wire trace down to my dead bait. I do make my own wire traces and I'll put a link to the top of the screen now to a video that will show you how to make a basic crimped wire trace. That is my simple float ledger setup. Nice and simple. The mechanics work. The less things you put on the line, the less things that can go wrong. Quite simply, you've got a float, a hook and a sinker. 
it's as simple as it comes but it works let's take a look at the ledger setup that we're using on the other one so the ledger setup again uses the same components as the float setup the snapper rod 60 pound braid and a Zelos reel. The float ledger rig really was simple but this is even simpler in its mechanics and its setup. You've literally got a free running ring from Corum and a three ounce gripper lead from Dinsmore's. You've got two beads, a swivel and then your trace down to a dead bait. Quite simply when you cast in your lead hits the bottom like that, you tighten the line up so you're right down to the lead and then when you get a run the pipe can just pull that line through the lead and the lead stays in place. There's no hooking of the pike done by the lead. Literally, as that pike moves off, you've got your bail arm open at the other end and that pike feels no resistance as it moves off with the dead bait. Like with the float ledger setup, it's nice, simple mechanics. Doesn't come any simpler than a lead and your trace on the end unless you're freelining. Nice, simple tactics that work and again, the less you put on the rig, the less you can lose if you snag up and also the less things that can go wrong. But that is my simple ledger setup. So a quick look over some of the baits that we brought today. Got some smelts and when I'm going the river I do try and pick up the nice sized ones on the canal. I don't think it makes that much of a difference but for the river I like to have a nice decent sized smelt. Got some mackerel and that's what we've got on the rods at the moment. Due to go a mare soon, so I did pick up some lamprey. Got a mixed little selection there, and they're great for the canal then, just for one session where you want a mixture of bait. And got in there some trout at the bottom as well. Nice smelly bait, like the rest of them. And we'll talk a bit more about oil in a minute. But that is the selection of baits that I've got. That last piece you will have noticed that I did mention to put oil on my baits today and I do get a lot of questions about my thoughts on oils. Now for me pike fishing is one of them forms of fishing that I do that I like to keep as cheap as possible. You know a pack of dead baits doesn't cost too much. If you go Morrison's you can get your baits quite cheap. If you make your own traces they can last you a long time and the general setups that you've just seen I leave them set up every time I go and very rarely do I change them. So the same setup can last you a long time during the season. And as such, it can be quite a cheap form of fishing. Now, this stuff is very good, but it's not cheap. You're talking five pound a bottle. So I will only use the oil when I feel it's giving me an advantage. If the river is clear, I won't use oil at all because I think that the pike then are hunting by a sight and smell. And I want to prey on that sight so rather than putting oil in my baits at that point, what I will do is cast a lot more, try and grab that pike's attention as the bait moves through the water. Today, the river is carrying a lot of colour, so them pike are not going to be hunting by sight as much. I want them to smell out a bait, and that is where this stuff comes into play. You want as much smell going through the water as possible to try and attract them pike to your bait. And it is coloured, I do feel you do wait longer for the bite anyway, but having that smell in the water most definitely is going to help them pike sniff out a bait. So that is the only time you will ever see me use oil really. Unless on the odd occasion I'm fishing a pike match and you really do want every edge possible then. But in general day to day fishing, if it's clear I won't use oil. If it's coloured like today, you'll see me using the oil. been a bit of a wait today for the bite but eventually it's come nice looking pike like I said at the start of the other videos do a bit of an unhooking video on the pike now this is where having a rubber net comes into play you can see there the hooks stuck in the net but with a rubber net they all just come out nice and easily and you've not got any of them wrap ups that come you know with a a woven net as you can see there the hooks are out you hand underneath the pike scale then you get your net out of the way so you're just dealing with the pike you put your hand underneath 
just slowly pull the mouth back towards you you can see there we've got a nice hook hold on this one nice in the scissors just take your time there's no prizes for unhooking the pike the fastest just take your time and there you go mr smelt nicely unhooked it's a lovely looking pike you see the colors on its back we we'll give him a rest in the edge you can see it's early season because the pike haven't got any depth to them you know that might be an upper single later on in the year but we'll give him a good rest in the edge that's him unhooked and then we'll get him out and blog him so there we go the first pike of the session a lovely colored pike probably taking about two and a half hours to come which i did think this morning would be the case when the river is a bit more colored it does take them longer i feel to find the bait We've got that one pike we wanted, we've got a couple of hours left, fingers crossed we can get one more, let's get it straight back. The pike was most welcome wasn't it and it did take its time coming. When you do fish you know, venues quite a bit you do learn them and looking at the river today I did know it was going to take a while to get a bite and we'd be very lucky if we did get one. The clarity is about a foot max so putting that oil on the bait most definitely has worked and just sitting and having the confidence in your bait and waiting for that pike to find it has most definitely paid off. Bit shocked that it's come on the smelt because obviously the mackerel is a much more of a smellier bait but you're just hoping that one comes across it. Hopefully the unhooking part of it helps you guys out who are new to it and we'll do more of that during the season. Right now I'm just going to sit back, watch the water and recently when I got back from France I did go out in search of perch on the lure. Now the venue that I'm going to show you, I've been asked not to film a video showing its location on because it's private land, but I am allowed to take, you know, little short video clips. So I'll play a bit of that session now when I went out after France to stretch my legs with the lure rod. So just got back from France this morning, a long drive, decided to nip out, stretch my legs with the lure rod, a couple of casts, and that perch has absolutely nailed that lure. A nice little start in beautiful condition. So after a few smaller fish, I change over to a Q paddler in eight centimetre. Has brought this better fish straight away. Great fun. Working that lure really fast and they're nailing it just on the way in. These early season perch are definitely up for the chase. A change to a quorum squirm. Just keeping the bites coming, worked really quickly along the bottom. Back to the bank and the rods are back out. We've got about two and a half, three hours of the session left. So fingers crossed, one more pike comes along. We're going to enjoy this brew, sit back and just chill out. There are some benefits though to coloured water and one of them being when the old current bun comes out doesn't really have as much effect as if it's when it's clear. Normally on a, on a day early season when it's clear and the sun comes out it's normally time to pack in but with that colour in the water today that sun won't have as much of an effect most definitely. I must admit when you've got a mackerel on and the ledger rod goes it has that bit more of a buzz about it, I don't know why. Um, it's just the same as any other bait really, but when you've got a big piece of mackerel on and the rod goes, it just has that buzz about it. But fingers crossed as we move into the last bit of the session, we can get one more pike on the bank. Coffee's just brewed and ready to sup. And one thing I would say is, you know, with your dead bait wrappers and all your rubbish, just make sure you take it home with you. There's nothing worse than coming on the bank and seeing dead bait wrappers and stuff like that. Number one, you know it's definitely anglers. There's no mistaking it for somebody walking. So unfortunately, no more bites were forthcoming on that session. And I did stay until last light that day. But you just can't make them bite, can you? You can do all you can, but unfortunately, sometimes... It just doesn't happen. I hope you've enjoyed this week's blog. 
Thank you to everybody who enjoys the channel and subscribes and watches the videos. If you are new around here, hit that subscribe button. There's a new video every Friday and I'll join you next Friday for another video. I'm off to get an ice cream because the ice cream van's just turned up and I want to wish you all tight lines and I'll catch you all next week.